We have looked at countless weird programs on this channel. Some of them incredibly useful. Things like, say, Emmet for Vim is probably my favorite way to generate HTML. And using that with, say, a JavaScript framework honestly saves so much time. Some of them, not so much. Things like, you know, C Matrix, or there's a program to generate the Doom Fire inside of your terminal. But absolutely none of them have even the slightest bit of weirdness on something like Eagle Mode. What you're looking at right now, I know you won't believe me, this is a file manager. You might be thinking, Brody, that's not a file manager, that is an Eagle. Well, Technically, both those things are correct, so let's go to the home directory. As I said, it's a file manager. So if you somehow couldn't tell, this isn't exactly a traditional file manager. It's certainly not a CLI interface, but it's really hard to say this is just a normal GUI interface either. None of these folders in here are actually buttons. So if we want to go into a folder, let's say the repos folder, we would do that by zooming in on that folder which honestly is a really bizarre way of interacting. So what this is, is what is known as a ZUI, a zoomable user interface. And I am sure that basically nobody watching this video has even the slightest clue what that is, and has probably never heard of it before. And before I wanted to make this video, I didn't know about it either. So let's look at this compared to a traditional GUI, and because this is a file manager, I guess we can go and use something like PCMANFM. So if I want to go into a folder with this, the way I would do that is by going and double clicking on a folder, and that'll take us into the folder we want to go into. Then we want to go to another one, we can do that again, and we can go back by just clicking a back button. All of the settings we want are going to be inside of the settings menu, usually in some sort of drop down function, but it doesn't have to be, sometimes it's going to be like a hamburger menu, but the basic gist here is that everything in a GUI is basically a hyperlink connected with buttons. That is the simplest way to describe it. But when it comes to a ZUI, you still have that hyperlink metaphor, except the way you interact with those links is completely different. So now rather than just clicking on stuff, Instead, we can now also go and zoom into stuff, and that is actually going to go and take us between these folders. So there's going to be situations where you can technically be in, what, We've got six folders open at the exact same time. Obviously, at some point, you're going to have to have some sort of button or some way to interact with these files. So let's say I wanted to go and do something to this file right here. I can go and click on that file. And then up in the options menu here, a lot of these buttons are really hard to see. And that's because rather than having drop down menus or a hamburger menu, instead what you're going to do is actually zoom in on those menus and that will actually let you see what's inside of those. It is a really, really weird way of interacting with a program and I don't know whether I like it, but I certainly don't hate the idea. Now I can guarantee someone is going to say, what in the world is the point of a zoomable interface? This is just inherently slower than doing stuff with a GUI. And what I have to say to you is, I guarantee when GUIs were first being introduced, there were people who thought the exact same thing who were used to doing stuff with a CLI interface. I'm not saying that this interface is inherently a good thing or is inherently a bad thing. All I am saying is this is a really interesting method to interact with a program and shouldn't just be dismissed just based on the fact that it's weird and not something you're used to working with. I think this program is an amazing example of what a ZUI actually is and what the concept allows you to do, because this basically leans into it as the gimmick behind using this file manager. But it's also by no means the only ZUI out there or a concept that this program created itself. You've never heard of a ZUI, but I guarantee that most people watching this channel are younger than the concept has actually existed for. So the first program that existed that used zooming through the application to access different parts of the interface was actually created back in 1962 by Ivan Sutherland. This is a program known as Sketchpad. This is basically a very, very early CAD program 
And being 1962, obviously it's not that impressive by today's standards. But for then, this was basically revolutionary. Now, while the idea of a fully zoomable interface that basically does away with, you know, menus and all that sort of stuff really never caught on. Like, most people don't use programs that act like Eagle Mode do. Some of the core concepts of a zoomable interface, being able to pan through the application and zoom to access different parts of it, have stuck around today and do see very, very common modern usage. So, for example, let's say you have a... Uh, an image viewer, a gallery program on your phone. If you have a single image open, a lot of those programs will allow you to go and zoom out and access, say, like, a monthly view or a gallery view. Or let's say you have a calendar program where you're currently looking at a day view and then you zoom out and you see a week. Then you zoom out again, you see a month. You zoom out again, you see a year. These are all concepts that came from the idea of a zoomable user interface. While it's not a fully zoomable interface where everything is centered around zooming, it is still a very core part of the way you interact with that program. Or another really obvious example, keeping it in line with Sketchpad, is modern CAD software. Let's take something like, say, Blender. Let's say you are designing a car, for example. If you design that car, Unless you're a crazy person, you're never going to design that car at one zoom level and just be done with it. You're going to do some basic work at a high zoom level, and then you'll zoom in a bit to access some finer details and do finer work that wouldn't be possible at that higher zoom level. And maybe when you've zoomed in that much, you can't actually see the entire vehicle. So what you're going to do is pan across to where it is, and if you think back to what we were doing with Eagle Mode, that is the exact same interaction model we were seeing there. It's just that the rest of the user interface acts more like a traditional GUI does. There is also a really great example right here in the Linux world. So back in 2010, with the original version of the GNOME shell, it looked a little bit different from the way it was going to look the following year. I think this basically speaks for itself. So basically they're going to be moving these windows between the different desktops. And when they've decided that they're done with all of that, then they can go and zoom into that desktop and start using that. Or they can go over to a different one and then zoom into that one instead. So while concepts from the idea of a zoom interface certainly have lived on, a purely zoo interface never really caught on. And that's because they sort of have problems that are basically inherent to the design. One of those problems is that interacting with a zooey is sort of just a weird way of working. You can get used to it. And while I did say a GUI was weird as well, the advantages that GUIs do have is GUIs have basically a, a physical representation in the real world. There are buttons in the real world that when you press, those buttons do things. There's not really a similar metaphor with zooming. Like, there's no situations where you, like, zoom into a thing and then something starts happening. Also, memory management, if not done well, can completely kill an application. So in the case of Eagle Mode, right now I've got, what, like nine folders open and all of the files in those folders look like they are open but not every file in here is actually being previewed some of those files are too small to actually bother previewing so there's no point actually opening them up if you didn't worry about that and just opened every file currently on the screen in some situations you might run across like a massive multiple gigabyte file that cripples the performance of the application. If the idea of a ZUI ever caught on, things like that could be addressed with frameworks, but the early applications would all suffer from the exact same problems, especially when someone sort of new to making a ZUI tried to do it. Also, when you want to have graphics for something like this, you can have incredibly high resolution graphics, like uh, is being done here. But a better way to handle it is probably to have vector graphics because vector graphics can be redrawn based on how big it actually needs to be and you won't lose any quality with the application. When you have massive files like this, this sort of leads back to the memory management issue where if you're loading all of these files at once on a, uh, a slower system, you might start to see a bit of a performance chug. But 
I guess in the case of Eagle Mode, stuff that isn't being displayed on the screen is being unloaded correctly. But because stuff has to be loaded and unloaded basically constantly, if you start zooming around a bit too quickly, you can, even on my system, start to see it chug a little bit. Not horribly chugging, but you can certainly see there is at least some level of performance degradation. There also needs to be a very different methodology for the way the interface needs to be designed. On a regular GUI, a menu like this would just be a bunch of drop-down menus with sub-menus, but in this case you sort of need to fit all of these icons on the screen at the exact same time. This has opted to use a bit of a spiral layout, which I feel like works fairly well, but in cases like these folders, let's say you want to mark like, what does this information mean right here? You could have another bit of giant text, or you could have a smaller bit of text directly above it because that information is far less important. And as long as you have the main information, you can basically know exactly what it is, but it is there if you do need to check. Or say like this right here. This is information about what is in the directory. Where do you put something like that? Do you put it in the folder? Do you have it as like an extra thing to the side? It's a very different way of designing interface compared to just a regular GUI. Initially, I was going to make this video about Eagle Mode itself, not about ZUIs in general. Because Eagle Mode does have some, uh, some really weird things, like this thing that generates fractals, or there's a clock here. Uh, there's, a, there's a game of chess here, so like, if you want to play chess, um, yeah, you can play chess. <laughs> like, all of this stuff doesn't need to be in a file manager whatsoever. Eagle Mode is just a really odd application. There's just so many really strange things that I could spend all day talking about here, but I felt like it'd be more fun to do a bit of a history lesson about what a ZUI is and sort of how they, how they interact with modern applications we see today. Sure, you probably have no interest in actually using a program like this, and I can't imagine many people watching this video and thinking, yes, Eagle Mode is the next file manager I want to use. But you cannot deny that this is a really interesting application, even if it's not very useful. It is really cool that someone sat down and said, I want to make a zoomable file manager I want to make a Zoomable file manager that has fractals in space. Why do I want to do that? I don't know, but I'm going to make it happen anyway. And then Eagle Mode started to exist. I will leave a link to Eagle Mode in the description down below. So if you want to go and check it out and see what it actually does for yourself and play around with the file manager, feel free to go and do so. It has a bit of a, um, what's the word? A bit of a, bit of an ancient look, we'll say. Uh, but... It's a cool application, and I think something like this is worth exploring to see what a Zoomable interface can actually do. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon subscribers to only bearer pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts, and this channel's also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.